title of today's message is The Phases of Matter. Solid, liquid, and gas are the three main phases of matter. Um, there's a fourth called plasma that we're not going to get into today. We're going to stick to the main three that everyone's familiar with, solid, liquid, and gas. And it turns out that these phases of matter are very much like, or can be compared to the individual personality and the maturity of the individual personality. So we're going to start with the first one, which is the solid. And solids have a definite shape and definite volume. Now that's the thing about a solid. A solid will not take the shape of a container. It will not take the shape of anything that you place it into. If you have a little block and you put it into that phase right there, the block still has the exact same shape. It's not going to change its shape to fit the shape of whatever you put it into. Another thing about a solid is that it cannot change its dimensions. It can't change the way its mass is spread out. It can't change its volume. It can't change any of those things. And it can't change its form or its dimensions without being broken or otherwise melted or some, something causing it to move out of its form, particularly broken because when you melt it, then it's not really a solid anymore and then it becomes liquid. So a solid cannot change form without first being broken. And if you look at the type of individual spirit that that would be, would be a person who is stubborn, would be a person who is set in their ways, would be a person that is not willing, if you will, to change themselves for another cause. They are set in their ways in a sense. Also a solid um, cannot increase indefinitely, which we'll talk about that later because that uh, will be very important. But for our first scripture, I want us to go to Yana, because we're going to look at someone who has this solid spirit, or who had the solid spirit at first, and we're going to be looking at how it's characterized within the human person. So uh, Yana, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. So it says here, Rise up and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. And we know what Yana does here. It says in verse 3, he rose up to flee to Tarshish. So he says, well, Yai wants me to go do that. That's Yai's container. I'm not doing that. You've heard of putting the square peg in a round hole thing and have it, you know, roughly the same area, how it doesn't work. Same thing happening here. Yana is saying, that's Yai's plan, but I don't like it. It's not my plan. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go somewhere else. Now, we know from the story that eventually... He ended up going to Nineveh. But what had to happen for his shape to change? He had to be broken. He had to be put in the belly of a wheel. He had to smell fishy. He had to be thrown up. And then, after that, and before all that, you know, there were storms that came and he got tossed off the ship and all this stuff. So bad things had to happen to Yana or Jonah to get him to do what Yahweh said. That's the change in shape. The only way you're going to change that solid is to break it. Now, if it wasn't a solid, if he was a liquid, that wouldn't have had to be the case. Let's look at another solid. And as we're going through this, sort of think about ourselves. As you go through each of these phases of, ma of matter, consider where am I a solid? Where am I a liquid? Where am I a gas? And how does that affect me? Let's look at Exodus 9, verses 1 through 7. It says, Yahweh said to Moshe, go into Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says Yahweh, the mighty one of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may worship me. For if you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them back, the hand of Yahweh will bring a terrible plague on your livestock and the field, on your horses and donkeys and camels, and on your cattle and sheep and goats. Now, this is not even the first plague. Many others have come before this, and Moshe came and did the same thing every time. Let them go, because Yahweh says, If you don't, this is going to happen. And every time, you already know, Pharaoh said, I'm not going to let them go. Okay, so continuing on, it says, Yah will make a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. Nothing shall die of all which belongs to the children of Israel. And Yah, will, and Yah will appointed a set time and said, Tomorrow Yah will do this thing in the land. And Yah did this thing on the next day, and all the livestock of Egypt died. But of the livestock of the children of Israel, not one died. Then Pharaoh sent men to investigate and found not even one of the animals of the children of Israel had died, yet his heart was hardened like a solid. And unyielding, he would not let the people go. Now we know from the story how this continued on all the way up until this guy lost his own son. All because he wasn't going to yield. 
he wasn't going to change. He was going to hold on to his shape. Now what eventually got him to let them go and change his shape? Him being broken. Him losing his son. But it didn't have to be that way. Scripture reads, oh, Yahweh hardened his heart. No. Yahweh doesn't put something within us that's not already there. Yet it's not the way it works. When a spirit comes around, it can only affect the people that are already open to that thing. That's the only way it's going to work. So when it says he hardened his heart, Yahweh just sent out a spirit, and the spirit said, can I land there? Oh, yes, I can land there, because it's all nice and swept clean for me. Zoop! And Pharaoh was a solid. And because he was a solid, he couldn't allow himself to change form and fit into something else without being broken. And so he had to suffer this terrible thing in order to change shape and fit in the container. He still went in the container. Jonah still went in the container. They still ended up being shoved into a plan that they didn't want to be shoved into, but they both had to be broken before they went in there. So we have to ask ourselves, are we solids that are going to have to be broken before we get in the container? second phase is the liquid phase. And this is uh, spiritually much, much better than being um, solid. Um, you're not going to find too many liquid people because uh, the liquid is, is, is very, um, very prestigious. The gas, when we get to the gas, you'll see why gas is like on a whole other level. But the liquid has no definite shape, but it does have a definite volume. So what that means is that when you pour water or some other liquid into a container, it's always going to take the shape of its container because its shape is indefinite. So look at this as the plans of Yahweh. Go back to Jonah. If he was like a liquid, Yahweh says, go to Nineveh, there. If we talk about Pharaoh, let the people go, gone. No big deal because he can fit in any container Yahweh puts him in. He's not worried about it. Now the thing about the liquid is that it cannot increase indefinitely. And that's what I'm talking about with the volume. Okay, the volume of the liquid is always going to stay the same. You can put five liters of water in a container, and it's five liters of water. You can pour five liters of water out of the ground. It spreads out, but it's still five liters of water. Its volume is never going to change. Even if it looks like it's all spread out, at the end of the day, its volume will be the same. Now, we're, go we're going to get into that a bit more when we start talking about the gas. But the liquid, the thing that's, that's great about the liquid, is that the liquid, like we said, has no definite shape. So it doesn't matter what circumstance or container you bring it to, it can always fit, and it will always take the shape of whatever you put it in. Now we're going to go to Philippians 4. Philippians 4, and we're going to read verses 11 and 12. It says... And verse 11, not that I speak in regard to want, for I have learned in whatever state I am in to be content. The water doesn't care what container you put it in. You could have a box, you could have a, a nice soda can, you could have a vase, you could have a floor. Wherever you put it, the water's fine, and it takes the shape of whatever thing it is you put it in. It says, I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. If you take a block of wood, there are some containers you can put it in, but some you can't. You're going to find something at some point that you can't stick that piece of wood in. It's going to happen. With water, you're not going to find something that you can't put it in. The only issue is going to be the, the, the amount of water that's there. But the water itself, it can go into any container. And it's fine. Now, here's where we have a difference between our gas and our liquid. And I talked about how the liquid, even though it can change form without being broken, so it's not subject to the things, to the pain that the solid is subject to, how it can't increase in volume indefinitely. If we consider this volume to be, in a sense, for lack of a better word, the blessings or the spiritual powers that might be granted. Um, by Yahweh or other spirit beings. The water is better off than the solid, but it cannot increase its volume indefinitely. So it's much better to be a liquid than a solid, but the liquid is not at perfection yet. As we're going, at least in terms of what this message is about. Liquid is not at the premium state 
in which it can continue to increase indefinitely. And look at that increase as abundant blessings in which this, it just never stops. The last thing we're going to go to is the gases. And the gases have no definite volume and no definite shape. What that means is that like a liquid, you can put the gas in any container and it will still take the shape of that container. But at the same time, the gas's volume, since it's not definite, can expand forever. So, this is why. If it makes a little toot in that corner, eventually those particles get over here. <laughs> Whether I smell them or not. Now it's likely that I won't smell them because the concentration in hands is all concentrated. <laughs> As it comes out, the particles spread further and further from each other. So by the time they reach me, I'm over here beating them in, and I might never smell them. But they're still here. They spread throughout the room. They spread throughout the house. You open the door, they spread throughout the entire planet. And everyone's breathing in flatulence, and they don't have a clue. Gas particles, or gases, can expand in volume indefinitely. That means there's no limit to the volume a gas can have. The only thing that can limit the volume of the gas is the container that it's in. Think about that spiritually. If the container is Yahweh's plan, and you're a gas, that means the only thing that can limit you is Yahweh's plan. That's what it means. If the container is always planned and you're a solid, well, you just better hope that you fit in that. Otherwise, if you don't, you've got to be broken to fit, to fit in it. If you're liquid, you might fit in it just fine. But you might not be living up to the full potential of that plan. Because I could put liquid in that vase and it can only be half full. And unless I put more water, it'll never fill up. But if I put a gas in there and put a top on it, that gas, no matter how little it started off as, it will expand and fill the entire thing. The entire thing. Boundless blessings of Yahweh. That's what that gas is about. That gas is about being the type of being, being the type of person that is only limited by the plan of Yahweh. That is only limited by what Yahweh has in store for you. That's why the gas is that ideal thing. It's great to be a liquid. That means Yahweh says this, you're good, he says that, you're good. Every plan of Yahweh, you're good. But you still might not be living up to the full potential. If you're a gas, you're good in all those positions, and you're going to be at your fullest in every last one of them. That's the difference. Let's go to Philippians 2. And when I bring the scripture to show uh, the only being or person that I, that I can think of that would have been um, definitely a gas. In, at least in this context. Philippians 2, verses 6 and 7, it says in verse 6, this is talking about the Messiah. And verse 6 is really the, the most important part. Who being in the form of Yahweh, did not think it was something to be seized upon to be equal with Yahweh. Think about the power that that individual had to be equal with Yahweh. That has to be a guess. It can expand indefinitely. Those blessings are indefinite. He can, he can do whatever he wanted to do. That's indefinite volume. That's what that is. Imagine to be a being that is so powerful that you could say, without a shadow of a doubt, that you're equals with the creator of the universe. That's indefinite volume. That's what the gas is about. If you can become a liquid, you can make it into Yahweh's kingdom. Because you're a liquid, you fit in any of those plans, and that's great. If you're a solid, you've got some work to do. I've got some work to do. Because I can tell you one thing. You read through this book, especially uh, back here in the Old Testament, and then in Ephesians, and you say, yeah, I like that, Yahweh. I'll fit in that container. And I'll fit in that container, Yahweh. Yeah. Mm. What's that container, Yahweh? I'm not getting in that one. Nope, you can't get me in it. And then Yahweh tried to squeeze it in. I'm like, nope, nope. Hold on to the slides, the rim. I'm like, nope, you're not getting me in that container, Yahweh. The solid. And what has to happen to the solid? It has to be broken to fit in the container. Because Yahweh's going to stick you in there anyway. I have one last scripture in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 2.
going to start in verse 11. It says here, and I, I want you guys to think about, you know, what's being destroyed in, this, in these verses. <clears throat> it says, The lofty looks of man will be humbled, and the haughtiness of men will be bowed down. Yahweh alone will be exalted in that day. For the day of Yahweh of hosts will come upon everyone who is proud and lofty, and everything that is lifted up it will be brought low. Upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, upon every high tower, and upon every fortified wall, upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the be uh, beautiful vessels, the loftiness of man will be bowed down, and the highness of man will be made low. Now he alone be exalted in that day. For he will utterly abolish the gods. They will go into the holes of the rocks, and in the caves of the earth, from the terror of Yahweh, and the glory of Yahweh, when he arises to shake the earth terribly. And that day a man will throw away his gods of silver and his gods of gold, which they made each for himself to worship to the moles and bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks because of the terror of Yahweh and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth terribly. Sever your souls from such a man, for of what account is he? Now, what do we notice throughout all of those verses? Everything that gets destroyed is what? They're all proud. They're all solids. Cedars of Lebanon, solid. Oaks of Bashan, solid. High mountains, solid. Every high tower, solid. Ships of Tarshish, that has to be solid. It's all solids. It's all the solid things that have to be broken. All those things have to be broken in order to fit the always plan. But if you can become like a liquid, then you don't have to be broken to fit the always plan. And if you go so far as to become a gas, then you will fulfill everything that Yahweh has in store for you in any plan that he has. And that's why I'm saying